Hello, it is August 17th, 2022, and this is Thoughts from the Word. Well, hello and welcome back to Thoughts from the Word. Glad that you can be here. I'm glad that we can be back too. Uh, We were gone a couple days. I thank you for uh, your patience with us. But today I want us to look at a passage Uh, from the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Book of Matthew, chapter 13. We're going to look at verse 43. So if you have your Bibles, turn there. Matthew 13, verse 43. Excuse me, I'm going to put that up on the screen. Hear now the word of the Lord. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Now, this verse falls at the end of an explanation of the parable of the weeds. And if you're unfamiliar with the parable of the weeds, it's a a parable that Jesus tells earlier in chapter 13 about uh, comparing the kingdom of heaven to to a field in which a man sows good seed and then his enemy comes in and sows the bad seed. And the quandary they're left in is how to determine the good plant from the bad plant. Because if they go in and try to remove one, uh, they may remove the other. And so uh, they're told to wait until they go to harvest, harvest the bad seed and throw it and burn it first, and then harvest the good seed or the wheat and put it into his barn. And we read these words at the end of his, uh, Jesus' description or explanation. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. And it's speaking towards the, the whole of the parable is speaking towards the final judgment, that the day will come when the, the bad and the good will be separated, the evil from the good, the, the, the weeds from the wheat, the goats from the sheep, all will be separated. We read then that the evil of the world will be destroyed, burned with fire. Uh, verse 40, just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The the Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Speaking about those who are judged as sinners in that final day, those who have not repented, those who have not come to Christ, there will be that judgment, and they will be cast into uh, the fiery furnace. They will end, uh, spend eternity uh, with that. But then 43 addresses the believer. That we who believe the righteous righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. We will exemplify, we will have and show and bear the glory of God. And that's what that picture is. That picture of the shine uh, and of the glory uh, in the Old Testament. Both are signified using the word uh, Shekinah. Talking about the glory of God will, which will shine through us. The righteous, the, the right ones, the children of God, will shine like the Father. We, uh, like the wheat, will be gathered into his barn. We will will carry on and live with him for eternity, and we will reflect him in every way, shining like him, showing the glory of God. I want us to think about that and imagine just living in and shining the glory of God every day for his glory in his glory, because of his glory, through his glory. All of that will be part of our life uh, for eternity, and we will know the glory of God because we will be living the glory of God. Take comfort in that, and he finishes, he who has ears, let him hear. This is something we all must think about and dwell on. Meditate on this. Spend some time thinking about it today. What will the glory of God be like Will, will, what will I, I see, know, hear, experience? What will the glory be like in that final day? Thomas Watson, in his book, The Lord's Prayer, writes about this. What are some of the blessings of having God in our, at, at, for our Heavenly Father? First, all of the promises of the Bible belong to us. A wicked man may lay claim only to the curses, but the promises are God's, child, God's children's bread and the support of their faith. They are God's sealed deed and a Christian's cordial. Oh, the heavenly comforts which are, dis- which are distilled from the promises. Like a garden of fruit trees, a child of God may go to any promise and pluck comfort from it, for his children are heirs of the promises. Second, we are conquerors. Though we may sometimes be foiled and lose a single battle, yet we do not lose the victory. 
The world holds forth profit and pleasure, and many are overcome by it. But God's children have world-conquering faith, 1 John 5, uh, verse 4. Thirdly, he will now and then send us tokens of his love. If we meet with coarse, coarse treatment from an unkind world, God will send pledges of his love to encourage us. What are these tokens of love? Answers to prayer, enlargement of our hearts and duty, and the first fruits of his spirit. Those are tokens of his love. Fourthly, he will indulge and spare us. He does not punish us as he might. Psalm 103.10 We often do that which merits wrath and grieves God's spirit, yet God passes by much and spares us. He did not spare his natural son, and yet he spares his adopted sons. Romans 8.32 Fifthly, he will honor us on the last day. In this world we are often maligned and misrepresented. If Satan cannot defile God's children, he will disgrace them. God will one day declare their innocence and roll away their reproach and cause their names to shine forth. Every prayer, every service, every work of love shall be openly declared before men and angels. Matthew 25, 35-36 Think on those four, five things. The promises belong to us. That we are conquerors. Uh, that he will send us tokens of his love, that he will spare us from punishment, and that he will honor us on the last day, all for his glory. And we will live in that glory each day. Let's close our time today in prayer. Father, we thank you for the marvels of glory. I pray that you'd grant us all a moment today, a time where we can just sit back and think about all that you bestow upon us and you give us. But Father, all that we've received also, that we might see in all of our life the glory of God at work. Father, be with us today. Empower us and strengthen us. Be glorified in us, Father. We thank you uh, and we praise you, Father, for uh, the opportunities you give us to serve. Work in and through us for the glory of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being with me today. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow as we gather together to hear some thoughts from the Word.